Jackson saying, could OBJ go to the Titans? Um, yes, it's a possibility. I think when you look at OBJ, I think he's going to go back to the Rams. There's a report that the Rams and OBJ have had some positive dialogue. And I think that's the most realistic possibility right now for OBJ. But when you look at the Dolph, when you look at, the, I should say, the Titans wide receiver room, they could use some help. Is Traylon Burks going to be good? I think so, but we don't know that for sure. They have Kyle Phillips. They have McMath. They have Nick westbrook Kenny. They have Robert Woods. OBJ would make that wide receiver room look a lot better than it currently does. I think it makes a lot of sense for a contender to bring OBJ in because he's probably going to miss a lot of the season, at least the first half of the season. So a playoff team, if they bring OBJ in, he can be you know, a pretty big guy down the stretch. Now, if you want NFL, NBA, and college football coverage all year long, hit that big red button and subscribe. We are Chat Sports, has, have videos every day, oftentimes multiple times per day on everything going on around the NFL. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe. The Panthers play the Browns next week. I need a full breakdown on what will happen and end it with a game prediction, please. I like this question. I like this question, NFL kid. Uh, Baker revenge game. I'm going to be honest. I don't think Jacoby Brissett's very good. I just don't. Uh, last year in Miami, he was mediocre. He's a decent backup, but can he start and play at a high level starting? I don't know. But Baker Mayfield, man, I mean, I'm surprised he's talking as much as he is. I mean, he's given the Browns a lot of bulletin board material. Uh, but I still think that the Panthers are going to win. In fact, I think that it's going to be a close game until the very end. I think it'll be like a three-point Panther lead going into the fourth quarter. Panthers win by 10. I'm going to say 27-17. to 17. Panthers win. Baker Mayfield throws two touchdown passes. And he's, uh, he's going to be doing a lot of celebrating. That, that game means a lot to Baker Mayfield. Do you ever see the NFL changing their overtime rules to have a winner, then having a tie? I appreciate that question, Mr. Sports, because I actually have a great idea. I think producer Jeremy Chugg is going to like this idea. So I understand the whole player safety thing, you know, why they don't want to play a second overtime. But here's what you do. Here's what you do. Here's my idea. If overtime ends in a tie, you know how, like, soccer has PKs? And, you know, hockey has, you know, shootouts. You have a kickoff between the two kickers. They start at the 10-yard line. Both kickers make that kick. They move to the 20. Both kickers make that kick. They move to the 30. They move to the 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, so on. And then whoever misses, you know, loses. I love it. It's a great idea. And then kickers are going to be very valuable in those type of situations. So the overtime rule should be changed. I mean, in American sports in the year 2022, there should be no ties. That should be illegal. They should change the rule. I think that'd be a lot of fun, a little uh, kickoff. Uh, I don't know what they'd call it, kick, shootout. I don't know, but it should happen. All right, from Vince, who is most likely, or who is the most likely real upset in week one? Okay, so you're talking about real upsets. So I, I will use the Vegas odds from that standpoint to help determine the upsets. Um, the the Vikings are not nearly the as big of a, underdog as I would think that they are or that they should be from that standpoint. That's kind of hmm, interesting. Uh, I do like the idea of, of the meme upset of Joe Flacco beating the Ravens. Not going to get my hopes up for that one. That seems a bit uh, a bit unlikely. So I like the Vikings over the Packers. I think that's a pretty realistic one from that standpoint. Beyond that, I mean, I don't see the Falcons beating the Saints. Lions-Eagles would be fun because it's the Lions, but I think the Eagles win that one. So I'll go Vikings over the Packers. Devontae Smith, is Traylon Burks a bust? I don't think so. Uh, the the, the Traylon Burks conversation, I think it's often fantasy-driven for these young guys, is really weird. I know he missed time at the beginning of OTAs and minicamp, etc., because he just, you know, had the asthma, wasn't in perfect shape, whatever. But he's really kind of plummeted in fantasy stocks and even odds to win Rookie of the Year. He's going to get the ball. He is a starter, I believe, for this team. We'll see if I'm wrong come week one. But, like, originally, your betting favorites to have the most yards would be like Rookie of the Year receiver, right? With Drake London, Burks, Garrett Wilson. So, we'll tie this in here into this in a second. But first, who will have more yards in year one? DL for Drake London, TB for Traylon Burks, GW for for Garrett Wilson, or O 
four other. If you're looking for other names, stay tuned here in a second. Now, today's show is made possible by BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code NFL Daily. If you put that 100 bucks, boom, an extra 125 for free for you to bet on. That, that uh, uh, NFL most yards was based on the earlier odds for Rookie of the Year. Things have changed significantly. Here are the updated Rookie of the Year odds before the Bills play the Rams. Kenny Pickett, plus 800. Brees Hall, plus 900. Damian Pierce has skyrocketed to plus 900. Chris Olave, plus 1,000. Along with Sky Moore and George Pickens. Romeo Dubs, plus 1,200. Drake London, Jalen Tolbert, plus 1,400. Then Traylon Burks at plus 1,600. Burks being so low absolutely shocks me. It's not Pickett, by the way. I, if you can pick who it's going to be, you'll win some major money on BetUS, so go do it. Chatsports.com slash bet, promo code NFL daily. Who are your top three breakout candidates for running back and for wide receiver this year? It's a great question. If a, I don't think I can count a rookie as a, as a breakout candidate here. Uh, I think Elijah Mitchell is going to be outstanding for San Francisco. I get it. They lost Mostert, but he's going to be the guy there going forward. I think he's going to be really good. Um, who else here? I think Chase Edmonds for the Dolphins is going to be really, really good. I think he's going to have a breakout year. And then when you look at some other guys, um, hmm, who else? Who else? Oh, yeah, Nico Collins, wide receiver for the Texans, going to have a good year. I think Jalen Waddell, I don't know if I call it a breakout year because he's really good in his rookie year, but when you look at what he did in his rookie year, like that was against CB1s. He's going to make CB2s look silly this year. Nico Collins for the Texans, as producer Jeremy Chuggs mentioned, he's going to have a really big breakout year as well. Um, again, Damian Pierce, I think, is going to have a good year. Um, here's another breakout candidate. Um, what do you, oh, Devontae Smith? Yeah, he might be good. Because now they have A.J. Brown. He does. He has. He takes a lot of pressure off him. So, yeah, Devontae Smith, too, in Philadelphia, I'd say, is going to have a breakout year. What do you think about QB Will Levis from Kentucky? Michael, you're asking the right guy. I am a big Will Levis fan. I am such a big Will Levis fan that – I might have to start doing mayonnaise in my coffee. That's how much I like Will Levis. I think he's going to be a stud at the next level. I think he has everything it takes to succeed at the next level. He looked great in their first game against Miami of Ohio. Won me some dough. I appreciate Will Levis. I think Will Levis from Kentucky is the real deal. I think he's going to be the third quarterback taken in this year's draft. I should say next year's draft behind uh, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young. Junior Estrada, NFL draft sleepers for next year. Ooh, kind of early uh, it was just week one of the season. I was kind of hoping it was going to be Devin Leary at quarterback, and then he uh, he didn't play very well in the first game. That was pretty disappointing. Jack's in my ear saying, Emory Jones, no. Sorry. Um, overall, it's a little early for draft sleeper conversations. If you check out the channel, I did some w week one winners that I was pretty impressed by from that standpoint. Some losers in there as well. Like Mayan Williams, not a guy on my radar, even though he played for Ohio State. Played awesome. Uh, Rasheed Rice, SMU. Good sleeper name in there. Uh, FSU had some receivers flash in that opening game as well. Uh, the Charlie Jones from Purdue, I think, is maybe a good example. Like Buffalo, Iowa, Purdue transfer, balled out in his first game for Purdue. That's a good name to keep an eye out for as well. Oh, and the South Dakota State Titans. Forgot I, I forget his name. That's a good one. Uh, UNC Panther King, Anna Man Marvel. Think the Jags could make the playoffs this season. I think they're going to be better this year, which is a very low bar to clear, I know. And of the AFC divisions, the South is the least of the group, just barely behind the AFC uh, East. Can they beat the Texans twice? Yes. Can they steal games against the Colts and Titans? Maybe. I think it's tough because you got to win 10-plus games. I don't see a 10-plus win jump for Jacksonville, but 7, 8, maybe even 9 and being in, the con in contention in December, I think that is possible.